Hello Capricorn, thank you for joining me for your Sun or Ascendant forecast for week commencing the 6th of August. Well the great news for you this week is that Mars, the planet of drive, is going to enter your sign on Sunday and is going to be with you for the following month. Now you've already got Saturn and Pluto in your sign which obviously have very different energies to Mars but Mars is going to give you a lot more punchiness to get on the front foot, particularly around the individual plans and hopes you've got, things that are really quite personal to you. But Mars, this week and the following week from this one, does continue that awkward right angle to Uranus, which is creating tension. It's undeniable. Now, Uranus itself goes into a retrograde on Monday, and I think for you, the significance of this combination initially with Mars through till Saturday still in Aquarius is that your desire to be more spontaneous about your resources, uh, what you do with your leisure time, who you indulge when it comes to pleasures, is something that you just may need to fall back on the more cautionary side of your nature rather than be too impulsive. But then again, your thinking or your energies could just be quite ebbing and flowing. But the great news is that Capricorn is exalted. Mars is exalted in Capricorn, I beg your pardon. So there is a lot to look forward to, even though the retrograde does continue till the 26th of August. Now, of course, Mercury does continue its retrograde. And there is three phases of the North Node also slamming on the brakes in the sign of Leo. But we do have a partial solar eclipse in Leo on Saturday. So if you are trying to make the most of your longer term financial situation or business interests or perhaps property uh, matters in, in more practical senses or in a more philosophical or spiritual sense, you see some kind of transformation going on in your world. It could be a bit stop-start. Obviously, if you're trying to collaborate with anyone else, Mercury retrograde could be a thorny issue, uh, particularly if the other person themselves proves to be a bit unpredictable. What you can take from this week, however, is that Venus, the planet of love, moves into a very graceful location for you when it comes to your worldly interactions, which is an area that you usually thrive around. And it's just saying that however frustrating things get this week, and they may do so at times, if you can just use diplomacy and patience and just get to know people, cultivate people in the right kind of professional way, then that could be something that works well for you in the following 28 days. If you're involved, a relationship could become more serious. If you're footloose and fancy three, you could meet someone through your work or someone from a different age group to you. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. I'm sorry if this video is late, it is because I continue to be not very well, but I'd love it if you would like or comment or subscribe to this channel. But for now, good luck and goodbye. Hello Capricorn, thank you for joining me for your Sun or Ascendant forecast for August 2018. This month begins with the Sun in the part of your horoscope to do with transitions and changes. It can be an opportunity to embrace the more mystical and even mythical part of life too, to get underneath the surface of things, to explore the deeper motivations you have and those people you are involved with. But Mercury, the planet of communication, is tracking backwards as this month begins and is also in the same location. So through to the 17th, I think this is more likely to affect the more practical side of the 8th house, which can be about shared resources, banking, investments, business matters, and in some ways to do with property transactions. Now you probably know that Mercury uh, Rx can cause some mischief. All we can do, as I'm always saying, is control our own circumstances, micromanage them in a pr as precise way as possible. That doesn't necessarily negate the impact of Mercury's retrograde. It just means we can minimise uh, the potential for things to go wrong because we make sure that we're keeping our side of things straight. But of course, Mercury's not the only planet that's in retrograde this month. There are a lot of retrogrades. 
and this is added to on the 7th when Uranus joins not just Mercury, not just Mars, but also Saturn and also Neptune and also Pluto in a retrograde. Now, these retrogrades are going to be talked about a great deal by a lot of YouTube astrologers, but I actually think your zodiac sign is probably going to take the hit the most when it comes to the higher octave or outer planet uh, retrogrades because um, Saturn and Pluto are retrograde in your zodiac sign and Mars is going to be coming back into your sign on the 13th from Aquarius, still tracking backwards through to the 26th. And also the North Node, the point of destiny, that is also going through three phases of its own retrogrades this month in that eighth house. So there's little doubt about it in that in the case of your sign, I think it is something to be really mindful of. Saturn's about structure, Pluto is about power. Now Saturn actually forges a really providential link all this month to Uranus, the planet of change, in your sister Earth sign of Taurus. Now these two, when they work well together, suggest that your real appreciation of tangible evidence of changes, seeing real results, can give you a sense of satisfaction if you are trying something new, but you're doing it in a very progressive, solid, methodical and step-by-step -step basis. If that's the case, your creativity can certainly be increased by Uranus, you can be open to innovation, but you're still going to have it all uh, bedded down in the notion that things have to work, they have to be sensible. And in that sense, the retrograde is offset by this very important trine. Now, Pluto stepping backwards, that is perhaps a little bit more complex, particularly if it's right on top of your sun, which depends on which part of Capricorn that you were born, or if it's contacting any other of your personal planets. But essentially, Pluto has been creating a great deal of change for all Capricorns since 2008. And I think there may be something that you want to evolve around, and it could be quite significant this month. There is little doubt about that. But I still feel that the most important retrograde this month is going to be around Mars. Because Mars is in a tight right angle with uh, Uranus for the first three weeks of this month. Now these two have been aggravating each other off and on since about the second week of May. So it's a very important transit and, and aspect. And let's think about what Mars means for you in Aquarius initially this month. Well, it's about everyday finance, whereas the Sun and Mercury and the North Node are about longer-term uh, financial involvement. So, with this right angle to uh, Uranus, there could be a temptation to be a bit more reckless with your resources, because you have that cautious instinct. You're often a bit, um, a bit more careful about taking hard and fast risks with your money, in the way that some other people could be. But it could just be about quite frivolous things, like you could end up splashing some cash to cheer yourself up on something that actually has no practical value. So really counterintuitive for someone like you, who usually makes very smart decisions in these regards. So just be conscious of that. But also there could be someone calling out for your help. It could be a loved one, it could be a, an offspring, it could be someone you're fond of who wants you to help and may come up with a sudden uh, need for your support. Uranus, very much about the unexpected. Mars, about potentially determination, but also frustration. So just be conscious of not going against the grain when it comes to how you like to uh, really vet things, think them through, and be very scrutinising in your approach. I do feel that's going to be good to continue. Now, equally... From the 3rd through to the 10th of this month, the Sun is actually forging a very happy-go-lucky angle to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter's in a, a brilliant angle for you. It's all about friendship, it's about your future, it's about um, higher ideals. And it may have been very positive for you around those areas over the last sort of about eight months. But this right angle to the Sun does have some downsides. Again, it could see you thinking about investing in a situation with a group of other people. It may be 
just something more social. But if there's any expenses linked to others, that's where you need to think very carefully so that you're not giving away your power or giving away a bit of control, which actually ordinarily would keep you feeling very much safe in, in terms of your resources. However, it does have an upside this, and it could be that you're just going to think about doing something collectively, um, and that could be quite fun, especially if it is something to do with like uh, a, a tarot party or something. Jupiter square sun in that regard could work well for you. Now, it is true that by the 7th, not only does Uranus go into its retrograde, but Venus moves into a new home. And this home for you can be really important as far as your worldly interactions are concerned. If you're having any interviews, you're meeting people who have uh, some authority, then your ability to cultivate these contacts in a very diplomatic and courteous way is definitely boosted by Venus. In a romantic context, I think this points towards you taking your relationships a bit more seriously. And if you're in a tie that's going well, this next month, the following 28 days from the 7th, could see you thinking about formalising the union. This could be about moving in together, could be uh, getting your own place to live, it could be about even getting spliced, if that's something that really appeals to you. Now, if you are footloose and fancy three, someone could come into your world through your professional situation. And don't be surprised if they're younger and older than you. So do keep an open mind. Now, on the 11th of this month, we do have a powerful partial solar eclipse in the sign of Leo. So this can be a chance to reboot and reinvigorate your ability to think beneath the surface, to be a bit more psychological in your approach to life or to shed any parts of your existence which aren't working so well for you. Now, with Mercury still tracking backwards, it could be a case that you are waiting for some money to come in, or someone's proving a bit tricky around a business matter. But by the 18th, things can improve. By the 2nd of September, I think things will be much clearer for you once Mercury comes out of shadow. But on the 23rd, the sun moves into Virgo, your, your sister Earth sign. The triplicity, especially if you're born very early in Capricorn, is just something for you to really celebrate. Because this can give you a real lift from the introspection that may have been more dominant early in the month. Now you can feel more adventurous, more free-spirited. You may want to travel, explore higher education. If you're involved in teaching and training, these skills can be really beneficial for you in the times to come. Now on the 26th, there is a full moon. But it's a full moon that's going to intersect that fabulous angle between uh, Uranus and also Saturn, your ruler. So I think when it comes to the ideas that can get exchanged, the everyday ideas, I think if you just take it to being open-minded about new ones and also also running them through your vetting system, which is very much about, come on, what's real? You can survive this forming really quite well. Mars, however, comes out of its retrograde on the 27th, and is going to be with you from the 13th of this month for about a month, come back into Aquarius about the middle of September. So for now, Mars in your own sign is going to give you a lot of feist, a lot of desire to push on, uh, a lot more a desire to be individualistic, which is good, but it is in contrast to the partial solar eclipse in uh, Leo, which is about your close involvement. So it could be a bit of a pinch point if you're in a tie where you don't feel you want to make that next stage of commitment, and you may feel that you're being a bit hemmed in by someone's demands, and your need for individuality in space is being thwarted, then I think Mars moving back into your sign and then coming out of retrograde on the 27th could see you in a much feistier frame of mind, along with the sun going into the sign of Virgo. And the more free-spirited side of your nature can definitely emerge as this month draws to a close. Now also, Jupiter and Neptune are going to continue to forge a fabulous alliance. Jupiter, remember, has been great for friendships. Neptune's in the point of your scope a point of part of your scope to do with 
ideas, your relationships with siblings and neighbours. If there are people that you find to be very uplifting and very enlightening, there may be a particular cause or particular spiritual approach or way of eating or even perhaps a way of trying to improve your system through supplementation that really appeals to you too. And that can continue to be a benefit this month for you Capricorns. I'd like to really apologise for getting this done late. I'm actually doing this on the day of uh, last month's uh, total lunar eclipse on the 27th of July. If you don't know, I was diagnosed with having rheumatoid arthritis some weeks ago. The medication hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, so many people have sent in great ideas and I have adopted a lot of natural approaches to try to help my system, but I have really been struggling to work I uh, haven't felt well, have been struggling to walk and sleep's been a problem too, getting up and down off chairs and so on. So thanks for the suggestions. Sorry this is late. I will endeavour to do better next month. I'd really appreciate it if you would interact with me as much as possible. So likes, comments and subscriptions, if you've yet to do so, would be very gratefully received. For now, good luck, goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon sign or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.